Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when it comes to the Psalms, probably the best known Psalm is the 23rd Psalm. You know, it just comes right to mind The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A beautiful Psalm that brings so many people so much comfort. When it comes to well known passages in the New Testament, probably right up there is chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, the love chapter. We hear it very often read at at weddings, sometimes at at funerals, Um, although the context in which it was written is a very different context. It's written in the midst of the uh, Apostle Paul's discussion regarding spiritual gifts. Last week we were talking about spiritual gifts and the body of Christ and the division that was uh, going on uh, in the church uh, because of, of one thinking their gifts were better than, than another's. And next week the discussion will continue talking more about spiritual gifts. But right here in the center of it, the Apostle Paul speaks about love. And this chapter can be broken up into three parts. He first speaks about the necessity of love. Then he speaks about the character of love. What is it? And then he speaks about the permanence of love, that love is permanent. He begins by saying, and now I will show you the most excellent way. The most excellent way for what is the question that comes. Well, the most excellent way to live as the body of Christ. The most excellent way to use the gifts that God gives us for the building up of the body of Christ. The most excellent way to to live in, in love as brothers and sisters in Christ. As we heard um, last week, as, as Paul said, that the, the, the believers were, were a body And that as a body, when one mourns, we should all mourn. And as one rejoices, we should all rejoice. Just as I I mentioned, that you hit your thumb with a hammer, and it not only affects your thumb, it goes through your whole body. And the same is true that when we have healing of one part, and it feels great, the whole body feels great. And so that that love and that that support of of one another is is there to, to build each other up, um, to edify, to be there for one another as we, we live in, in mourning and rejoicing with one another, living in, in love uh, for one another in the most excellent way. So then he goes on to talk about then the necessity of love. And as he speaks about the necessity of love, he, he says, you know, I, I'm, I, I can speak in, in tongues of men or angels, but if I do not have love, I'm just like a big noisy gong or a cymbal. And he says, and, and if I have the gift of prophecy um, uh, and, and all knowledge, uh, and if I have the faith to move mountains, but if I don't have love, I, I'm nothing. And if I am the most generous person in the world and, and give uh, to so many people, and, and if I endure hardships and I don't boast about it, but I, I don't have love, Um, What is that gain? What is that gain? What are the spiritual gifts to gain? They're to gain the building up of the body of Christ. That's why the Lord has given these gifts. Um, He's given these various gifts to build up the body of Christ for the sake of the mission for the sake of the proclamation of Christ, to support, to encourage one another, and to be about living the life of Christ and living Christ with one another. And, and he says with the spiritual gifts, if there isn't love involved with them, it's meaningless. It's worthless. Throughout this letter, as Paul's been writing to the, to the first Corinthians, as we've been looking at it, what we've seen over and over again is we've seen um, uh, factions, we've seen um, a uh, uh, allowing or tolerance of gross sin, uh, people eating meat sacrificed to, 
to idols, no matter whether it causes damage to the other brothers and sisters or not, divisions in the way they uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper, and um, uh, divisions in spiritual gift. And all of these problems have all been symptomatic of the lack of love. The lack of love. You know, you, you, you think about it. In, in, in all situations, what, what, what so often is the problem? It's the lack of love towards one another. Uh, as the Lord gave the commandments back in the Old Testament, and as they were summed up in the, in the New Testament, what's the sum, summing them all up? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's all about love, the necessity, the importance, the significance of love. Paul then goes on to speak then about the character of love. What is love? And he uses a whole series of verbs to describe love. And some of these verbs are in the positive, and some of them are in the negative. What love isn't. But they're all about action. So as the Lord, or as Paul describes love, he describes the action, the living out of love. I want to read to you his definition in verses 4, 5, and 6 of love. Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. Jesus does not envy. Jesus does not boast. Jesus is not proud. Jesus does not dishonor others. Jesus is not self-seeking. Jesus is not easily angered. Jesus keeps no record of wrongs. Jesus does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Jesus always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Maybe you've heard that before with putting Jesus in there instead of love because Jesus is the personification of love. Jesus is love, and Jesus did all of these things. Jesus does all, all of these things. Jesus is incredibly patient with us. Jesus is incredibly kind to us. Jesus doesn't keep any records of wrongs. As we heard in the psalm, when our sins are forgiven, as we are forgiven, he removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't keep a record of wrongs. On the last day when Christ comes again in all of his glory and we stand before God, and as God looks at us, you may have heard me say this before, we have a cross-eyed God because he looks at us through the cross of Jesus Christ. And he'll look at us through the cross of Jesus Christ and he'll look at our record. And it'll look like this. All because of Jesus Christ. Completely clean. Not because of anything we've done, but all because of Christ. So who wants to volunteer for me to put their name in this and read through it? You know, like, Mark, Mark is patient, Mark is kind, Mark does not envy. We don't have to read it very far and it starts to make us uncomfortable, doesn't it? Because it's like, yeah, try to be those things. We try to be those things. Sometimes we're not. Sometimes we're not patient. Sometimes we're not kind. Sometimes we are self-seeking. Sometimes we do keep records of wrongs. Sinners as we are. But the goal should be to seek to read through it using our name. Because love is Jesus personified and we are to grow to be more and more like Jesus. As disciples, we are to grow more and more to be like Jesus, so we then are to grow more and more to be love. And so we should seek to grow in love. 
and, and, and seek to, to grow in reading this with our name in it. Because God gives us the tools to do that. He's given us the Holy Spirit. And in our baptism, we were given the fruit of the Spirit. Paul speaks of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, where he says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Sounds a lot like the things that are in here. Yeah. And the fruit of the Spirit are things that are given to all Christians and things we are to grow in and mature in. And as we look to the Lord and seek to grow in, in, in not being people who are impatient or seek to grow in not being people who hold grudges, but seek to be more loving and gracious and merciful. What would life be like in our church, in our homes, in our community, in our country, if there was far more love? And that's what the Apostle Paul is saying as he gives this definition of love. It's not just to throw it out there and for us to read through it and go, yeah, I can read it if I put Jesus' name in there, but boy, it doesn't, I, I can't do that. Can we ever reach perfection? No. Can we grow in our maturity in the way we love and the way we live the life of Christ among others? Absolutely. And that's what life is about. Our whole life is seeking to grow in the grace and the love and the mercy of God and living that out with one another. The last third of this passage, Paul talks about the permanence of love. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in, in, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Paul talks about, yes, the spiritual gifts, they're important, they're significant, they're valuable, but they're temporary. They're for use here and, and now. But just as when we, when we grow up, the things that we needed as a child or the things that were childish as we become adults are no longer needed. Just as right now we only know in part about the Lord, like looking in a mirror, it's just a reflection, but the time will come when we will see the Lord face to face and know him completely as he knows us completely. And so the Apostle Paul is saying, those, those things, the spiritual gifts, those are important for the building up of the body of Christ, but they're important for now. And then he lists, but, but these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. What's most important is faith, belief, and, and confidence, and trusting in the Lord, trusting in the Lord. And having that faith and that certainty and that sureness in the Lord. Hope. Hope which is not wishful thinking, but hope which is, a, which is guaranteed. It's as if we already have it. We do already have it. Eternal life is already ours. All the blessings of God already ours. And we have that hope and that certainty as we go forward. We know what our future is. And love we live and experience and live in the marvelous love of God. And Paul says that these three things are more significant and more important for the Christian than the spiritual gifts. The spiritual gifts are important, but it doesn't matter which ones the Lord gives to and who has what. Because working in love with one another 
we have all that we need to do the things that the Lord calls us to do. But the most important is to, to have that unity of faith, hope, and love. And then he says, the greatest of these is love. And why is it the greatest? Because it's the most important for the building up of the body of Christ. It's the most important for unity, living love to one another. And also because it's permanent. When Christ comes again in all of his glory, raises all the dead, body and soul reunited, all together, one in Jesus Christ, no more sin, glorified bodies to live in the perfect presence of God for all eternity, faith is no longer needed. It's been fulfilled. Hope, no longer needed. It's been fulfilled. We're in the perfect presence of God. But love, love continues into eternity. And we live in God's love for all eternity. And so Paul is encouraging us to grow in love as we live here on this earth. Continue to grow in this love because that's how we're going to live for all eternity. In love for God and in love for one another. So how do we grow? How do we mature in love? Well, one of the things I'd like to encourage you to do is write down verses 4, 5, and 6 of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Three verses. Starts with love is patient, love is kind. Write those down. Post it somewhere in your house or several places or put it in your Bible where you do, when you do your devotion time or your prayer time. And I really would encourage you to read those verses at least once every day. Or if you want to copy it from your phone and put it somewhere on your phone where you can pull that up, you're standing in the, in the line, at the, at anywhere standing in line, you can, you can read through those verses. I encourage you to, to read that, to hear that, so that it, it, it becomes memorized what love is and how it is that God calls us to live. Because as I mentioned earlier, all the problems that were happening in the church in Corinth, all the problems that happen in our congregation, in the Christian church, in our community, it's all symptomatic of what? The lack of love. So one of the most important things is as we experience the love of our God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to seek to grow in that love. And so as we read through it and then think about it and contemplate, hmm, I need to get control of my anger, especially in what happened earlier today. Why am I holding on to this grudge? I didn't think I was holding on to it, but I am. How can I grow through this? And pray about it. Pray about it because the Lord hears us and the Lord desires for us to grow. And his love, it never fails. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.